Hello everyone, this is the IFC Architect, and today we're going to be going through parametric doors and windows um, using the built-in door and window modifier in BlenderBim. To install BlenderBim or Blender, check the installation videos in the description. Please update your BlenderBim to the latest build I'm using found on my channel about page. My layout very simply has the properties on the right-hand side and the outliner on the left-hand side. Please make sure that you've got your snaps enabled, which just allow you to easily uh, model things and move them around and make sure that your move gizmo, this little object here, is uh, selected. Control Z, Control Z. You can follow what I'm doing, the screencast keys in the bottom left. Okay, cool, let's get started. All right, so to get started, you just need to create a project. Make sure that you have using these elements and that uh, you have selected the IFC4 demo library. Say create project and it will automatically set up a project structure in the outliner. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a wall to host our doors and walls in, uh, our door and window in. So we select the wall tool and we say shift A. And I'm going to turn on my screencast keys so you can follow what I'm doing. And you can see we've got a wall there. And I'm just going to make it a bit longer. Drag my 3D cursor and say shift D. Snap to the wall, select the door tool. Make sure we've got a door selected, shift A. Make sure we got a window selected, shift A. And now we've got a window and door inside of our wall. All right, so to adjust these and make them parametric, we can just select the wall, the door. We can go to our Geometry and Materials tab. And over here in Parametric Geometry, there is a door modifier. So we just click Add Door. And you can see it adjusts the door to a parametrically generated one and we can start editing these features. So I'm just going to go through them one by one and get different variations of this. So to start with, we've got the, let's just make this a bit bigger. To start with, we've got the door operation type. So this is whether it's a single swing, double swing or sliding or double door, right? So if you say double, uh, single swing right, it's going to change the position of the door handle. Double swing, it'll, it's a bit bigger. <laughs> uh, Double door single swing, it's a very small door, and then sliding to the left, sliding to the right, and double door sliding. So those are the options at the moment, and more are being added all the time. So we're just going to go with single swing left. The next is the height, so this gets adjusted in real time, you can see there. And the boolean is the opening, live see opening, is created after you click finish editing. So if we make this 2125, which is the standard door height in South Africa, and we make it a width of perhaps 700 and we say finish editing you can see it's adjusted the opening so that the door fits into it nicely but we can go back into there and we can start adjusting different elements so the next thing is the lining depth so you can see that is the um, frame over here i think we can just leave that at 50 and the thickness again i think this could just be 20 to be honest the offset so it's the offset of the door position, whether it's in the front, in the middle, or the center. Zero is fine. Lining to the panel. So if you have an opening of some kind, I'm sure this could be useful in some cases. I'm gonna leave it at zero. Lining panel. So it's another kind of offset, but this is the, the panel inside of the door. The transom thickness, which we can't really see here. Put it at zero. The casing thickness, that again is the frame, the depth, the threshold thickness, that's underneath the door, leave it at 10 I think, and the threshold depth. So you can see we can get it to in and out. So it's very, it's very um, adaptable, it's very uh, adjustable, and the threshold offset, obviously. I think we just leave it at... Let's make it 40. All righty. Then we have panel properties. So the panel depth itself. So this is the thickness of the door, essentially. And the, so we could probably just leave that at 40. And the panel width. So if you have a door that you want to conceal half an opening, you can do that. I'm just gonna say one. All right, so those are all the door adjustments you can make. And then we have the window. So if we go here, same story, 
geometry and materials window, click the plus button and it loads a parametrically created window. So we can edit this. And again, there's a single panel, there's a double panel. There is a, so that's horizontal, double panel, vertical, triple panel, bottom, triple panel, top, triple panel, left, right, horizontal and vertical. So I'm just going to leave it as a single panel. And then again, same story. We can adjust the height and we can adjust the width. So if we want to make this maybe 1,500 and we want the height to be 900, 900, not 9,000, we can say finish editing and you can see it's adjusted the window. So if I want to just move this window um, up or down, I'm just going to select the window, press G, Z, and then snap it to the same height, the lintel height of the door, and then just say Shift G to regenerate the position. All right, so then we go back to the modifier. And again, same story. We, we can do the depth of the lining, the lining thickness, which you can't see too well there, the offset, which is the position in the wall, the panel offset X, which I think we just leave it 25, and the panel offset Y, which again, 25 is fine. Right, and then we've got our frame depth, 35 is okay, and our frame thickness, and again, 35 is okay. Normally, if you have a square frame, these are gonna be the same thing. Right, so there's all the parameters you can um, adjust with the window. So I'm gonna say finish editing. So I'm gonna make this wall extra long. Make sure you have select the wall tool. Say Shift E, and I'm going to show a series of doors and windows. I'm gonna select the door tool, GX, Shift G, and we're going to start adding some doors. So we can click on the waffle grid and we can just say duplicate type. And we can add that new type. Well, I think how many options are there? Let's go. Enable editing door. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight options. So let's get eight door types. And then I'm just going to call this two. And this one is going to be three. All right, so then we just go back to the, the wall here. Make sure you have the door tool selected and just select the door you wanna add. So Shift A, then we can go here to Geometry Materials. Make sure you selected the door, add the parameters, click on it, and we're just gonna adjust things. We're just we're gonna leave it basically how it is and we're just gonna show the different types. So single swing right, and then two, one, two, five is my preference. Add another one, door three, shift A, select the door, double swing left, and two, one, two, five, finish editing. I'm just gonna move this window out the way, GX, shift G. <clears throat> We're gonna add door, Type four, shift A, select the door, add the door modifier, change it to double swing right, do one, two, five, do the next one, five, shift A, select the door, add the door modifier, double door single swing. Make it 2125, finish editing. I don't know why it's, there we go. Select door six, select the wall, shift A, select the door, add the modifier, edit. Sliding to the left, 2125. Click. Add door seven, shift A, select the door, add the modifier, plugging to the right, two, one, two, five, finish editing. 
add door eight, shift A, select the door, add the modifier, eight at the modifier, change it to double door sliding, two, one, two, five, and a shader two. So the double doors normally we'd be, <laughs> we'd give them um, twice the width. So I'm just going to shift these up a little bit and say shift G and then shift this guy up a little bit and say shift G and then edit this last door, make him twice the width, so 1800 and then make this guy twice the width as well, 1800. I'll just move him closer, shift G. And then you can see all the door types. If we make this a bit thinner, you can see we've got all the current geometrically created, parametrically created uh, door types available. All right, so we can do the same thing for the windows. We're just going to select the window type, make sure we're on the create window tool, click on the waffle grid, and we're just gonna create, check how many types we can create. I'll edit the window. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, finish editing. So I'm just gonna take this window, GX over there and say shift G. And then we're gonna start creating the other windows. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So then nine windows now, and we're just gonna edit these. All right, so we've accidentally added a window. I'm not certain which one it is, but I'm just going to make sure they're all in the same height. So this is window type one. And this is window type six. All right, let's change its type. So we can go to object information and we can go to type and we can change it to two. Yeah, they're exactly the same at the moment. Um, all right, geometry materials, add the window modifier, click on it, change it to a double panel, horizontal, finish editing. Let's add the next window, window type three, shift A, Add a one window modifier, edit it, change it to double panel vertical. Okay. Let's close these so we can see this better. Go there, change it to window type four, say shift A, add the modifier, edit it, change it to a triple panel bottom, finish editing. Repeat, select the next window. Add the modifier, change it to a triple panel top, finish editing, repeat, select the next window, shift A, add the modifier, edit it, change it to a triple panel left, select the next window, window seven, select the wall, shift A, add the window modifier, edit it, triple panel right, finish editing, Select the last window, oh, second last window, window eight, shift A, add the window modifier, edit it, change it to a triple panel horizontal, finish editing, and then select the wall and select the last window, window nine, shift A, add the window modifier, edit it, triple panel vertical, finish editing. All right. So for instance, um, we can just adjust this last one to showcase how you can adjust the mullions and the panels. So if we click on this, I'm just gonna shift it up a little bit, GX, let's say Shift G, and we edit this. There's a few parameters that we can adjust for this window um, in addition to the normal one. So we have here the mullion thickness, um, which is its own uh, factor or value and we also have the first mullion offset so if we change the overall width to uh, 1500 and we just click finish editing to see that you can see we have the first mullion and we have the second mullion so they're all offset from the origin essentially you can see this little orange dot is the origin so if we have a 1500 width um, we're probably if we want this to be equidistant we can say 500 for the first mullion and 1000 for the second million and that's how you can adjust the window spacing basically so we can say finish editing there and now we can do something similar for the this horizontal panel so i'm just going to move this one up gx shift g edit this one 
hit it. We're going to make it that same width, 1500. Finish, and then just open it up again so we can preview it. And you can see here we have um, the, some, uh, the same values. So we have the mullion thickness. So make that 50. And then we have the transom thickness. Can make that 50 again. And then the first mullion offset and the first transom offset. So a very common um, configuration is a third configuration. Um, so again, I would probably make the first mullion offset uh, 500. And then the, if we're doing 900, we normally work in opening elements of 600 or 300. So the first transom would be either 300 or uh, 600. And one of those would be an opening section. Or if we want it to just be equidistant, since 900 tall, 450 would split it in half. And that's a very normal looking window, well, at least in this part of the world. <laughs> and remember to just always click finish editing. You might have area, uh, issues or errors later on. And then all we're going to do is we are going to create an elevation here. So for that, I just need to save the drawing. So you can go here and you can just say save IFC project, or you can press control S. So my IFC file is saved. And we're going to create a plan and we're also going to create a elevation. So we're just going to go drawings and documents, click on this drawing drop down. I'm just going to collapse everything else. We want to create a plan out there at the story level. You can see the plan has been created. We can activate that plan and we're kind of super zoomed out. So I'm just going to click on it. I'm probably going to make this 40. So I clicked on the data properties. Uh, maybe 35 is better, or even 30. Yes, it fits for 30. And then I'm going to change the raster x and y directions. So this is more of a ratio than a, than an, an absolute length. So if you adjust it, it just changes the ratio. So you can adjust in both directions. So I want something like that, basically. So maybe 160. And then I want this to be 1 to 50 for a little bit of detail. So I'm just going to say create drawing. And there you can see all of our doors. So we've got single swings and we have double swings. We have a double door. We've got sliding, double sliding. And then we have our windows. So you can see um, they aren't offset perfectly. <laughs> so we've got our big window. Horizontal window, our um, split windows. And then we've got our big normal window that small window and our triple um, vertical window. Right, so that's our plan. And then we want to do the same thing for the elevation. So I'm going to go back to scene properties. We're going to go to drawings. We're going to say elevation from the south. Perfect. I don't know if it automatically detects it, but it normally gives me the correct direction <laughs> for the elevation. So we click south and we say activate. And then we have it. And then again, we're just going to adjust this. I think we know now 30, it will fit. And then we're just going to change the ratio so that it fits nicely. So I think 200 works nicely. And then we can say create drawing. And there you can see all the doors and windows in elevation. I probably want to make this one to 50 again, just for a bit more detail. Create drawing. There we go. All right. So there's all the doors and windows, the single swing doors. The double swing doors, they seem to have a thinner um, door frame by default. Um, these are the double doors. These are the sliding doors. They don't look too different uh, at the moment in elevation. And then this is also a double door. And then we have our single pane window, double pane horizontal window, um, double pane vertical window, a triple um, for the bottom, a triple for the top, a triple for the left, a triple for the right our horizontal three pane and our vertical three pane. These are all the parametric windows and doors you can create automatically in Blender BIM without having to physically model them. And of course you can adjust them and they will be adjusted dynamically. All right, I hope that was helpful. I hope that was um, insightful. Have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching, bye-bye. Uh, if you found that interesting or useful, you can check out more at the OS Arc community page. This was made using Blender, the Blender BIM add-on, which is powered by the IFC Open Shell. And the community that we're involved in is the OS Arc community. I will provide links in the description and you can check other videos to follow along.
Thanks for watching. Bye bye.